What's going on, traders? We have so much to talk about, yet so little in this episode of the Weekly Watchlist. Check it out. So as we know, in the Weekly Watchlist, I do a technical analysis and give you some of my thoughts on the tickers up here on the left. We always have the broad market, and then we move into our companies, the same core companies we watch every week. The Discord members did vote on the tickers they want to see covered in the quickfire round, so we'll go over these ones right here. So what did I mean in the intro by so much yet so little to talk about? Well, first of all, the only thing scary that happened up here in New England for Halloween was the fact that we got snow. So that aside, let's move into some more market pertinent information. Obviously, last week's video had a bullish sentiment, right? We were talking about the pullback wasn't too bad, yet that all changed on Monday and Tuesday. So what I want to ask you is, would you be willing to watch a midweek market update? Would you want to see a midweek market update? Something that would come out on Tuesday night or Wednesday night, and I'd just give you probably five minutes or so on the broad market. We won't cover all the companies that we always do in as much depth as we do, but again, probably five minutes on the broad market, as well as if anything crazy happens in any of our companies, we'll probably just make a mention of that. So would you want to see that? Let me know down below in the comments. And thirdly, we have an election coming up on Tuesday. So everything that I might cover in this analysis here could go out the window, and again, would be another reason why it might make sense to have more of a midweek market update uh, rather than you know put all of your eggs in one basket and just go off of what we cover in this weekly watch list. So again, let me know in the comments section. It would be a shorter version, five minutes or so, broad market, and any other crazy events. Let's get started. So jumping right into our SPY weekly chart, we're just going to look at the facts, because obviously with the election, anything can happen, and I don't want to sway you one way or another. So looking at candle structure and location first, for structure, we have a large red-bodied candle, right, with a very small, in comparison to the size of the body, lower wick, and an even smaller upper wick. So what does this tell us? It looks like red downside continuation. Sellers were strong here, closing way down at the lows of the session, as opposed to leaving some sort of lower wick. And there was no upper wick at all, meaning there was no strength from the buyers really at any point during the entire week. In terms of location, I do want to point out that we didn't quite come into this low here as marked by that green hammer candle. But again, you can't really count this as a higher low until we reverse out of this area. And again, with a continuation candle, you really want to wait for that confirmation before making a decision based on this one simple fact. Next up, I do want to point out the range of this week's candle. If you don't know where to find this in Thinkorswim, it's this really handy tool right here. It says R and then $20.38. That just means the range of the current candle right here was that much. So again, pretty strong and nasty downside selling this week. The range was quite large. And normally, this is a continuation candle, as we've mentioned so far, you would see lower after this. I do want to break out the Fibonacci's just to show you that Again, we were looking at this sort of pullback here, right, from our most recent move up. In our last week's video, we talked about this hammer candle forming on the 38.2, but what did this candle just do? It pretty much took back all of our key levels, and now we're gunning back for a 100% retracement, so keep that in mind. Jumping over to the daily chart, you'll notice that we did fill this gap that was left way back from late September, so that gap was filled right here. However, you'll notice now we have a large gap above us. So do gaps always have to fill immediately? No, as we saw with this September gap, it took a little while for price to really come back down and test it, and of course it did fill. So do know that we have a gap above. 333.32, that's a lot of threes, fills up to 337.96. So watch out for that on any sort of swing to the upside. After that, it's really gonna be the resistance trend line. After that, of course, we're coming into 342.50, and then all of these levels will be mapped out. Again, with election coming up, I do want you to have all the levels and be prepared for any sort of crazy swing in either direction. So go ahead and just take a look at our upside levels, map them out if you'd like. To the downside, uh, we do have our 321.88, which comes from our group of lows right here. Anything below that is coming from a little bit further back. We have two shelves to really look at, this one here, as well as this one, and then one last one. We'll just scroll a little bit further back so you can see it here. Right around $300, the key psychological support that we talked about earlier on in the year for quite some time. I do want to note that there is a super support here at 312.86 with our 200 SMA, so watch out for that. And just quickly in terms of candle structure and location, we do have a hammer candle that printed there on Friday. But what's interesting about this, of course, is that 
looked like a lot of short covering. And the reason being is, again, with a binary event coming up on Tuesday early on in the week, it's probably not a good idea to hold a short through the weekend. Um, again, anything could happen. Let's say the market gaps up huge on some crazy uh, news event related to the election. Those shorts are now crazy underwater, uh, and, and that's not a position you want to be in. So again, it looks like just a short covering rally, which is why we printed that lower wick. But do know, uh, again, anything can happen with this election. I've said that so many times now. Be prepared for any of these levels. Um, and then really, again, wait for that midweek market update if the people voted in. On the queues, we're going to do a very similar thing here. Obviously, we have our upside targets mapped out. We have a resistance trend line, which is very steep uh, considering. So that looks like it may break through time if we get a sideways consolidation here. But again, with election coming up, something will probably happen one direction or another that keeps the trend line either breaking through price or, you know, not even in play. So that's a possibility. After that, though, it looks like we have a pretty thick resistance zone ab above us, right? This was our... Uh, area from the pressure cooker top. I don't know what happened there with the zoom, um, but that's the pressure cooker top area right here that we struggled with for some time when we broke out above it uh, and then retested it from the top. You can see it turned into a flush point where there was a lot of support. And once it broke, we really went much lower. So this is a critical area in the chart. So keep these two numbers definitely in mind for any upside continuation. After that, it's the swing high at 297. And then after that, it's really the all-time high and the back test of our support trend line from the bull channel we were in for so long. To the downside, though, again, we'll just cover them all. After that, we have our cluster of lows down here with, again, a red continuation-like candle on Friday. It looks like we want to go lower. The dead cat balance or short covering here in the queues wasn't as extreme as what we saw in the SPY. Um, so again, red continuation. Let's map out some lowers. We have that level there, 262.62. We just talked about this group of lows at 256.28. And then underneath that here is a prior breakout point, which should act as support when testing it from the top at 246.86 or 68, excuse me. Anything underneath, again, watch out for in the midweek mid update if it's voted in. So IWM was a failure of its picture perfect bull flag. We talked about this being the flagpole in last week's video. And this, of course, was the flag. So there we go. That looks a little better. We were expecting, you know, if the pattern played out the way it should have, to be a breakout to the upside, but that simply wasn't the case. And again, that all happened, the breakdown here on Monday and Tuesday, as we broke down through key support. And of course, we have just consolidated and really balanced for three days now on Wednesday through Friday. So what are we watching for here? A breakout of our balance area. And with balance comes balance rules. So we have a doubling of the range to the upside as potential targets and a doubling of range to the downside as potential targets. Now, again, with an election, will these rules be completely blown out of the water? Probably, but you should know them just going forward. So if we get a break of the upside resistance, look to target double the range. If we get a break of the lower support, target double the range. If we come into the range and we don't get any continuation all the way down to almost a doubling or our next key support, then you look for a look below and fail where we come back into this balance range and then we retarget the upper end of the balance. The same thing goes for the upside. You get a small move up, don't get quite all the way to the top of the box or our next resistance. You come back into the range, you always target the lower support end. So there's some rules for you and how you can play these things going forward. What's interesting about this one too is the fact that we have the 50 SMA right overhead as well at our 155.43 resistance. So to the upside, we covered it. Here is our resistance zone. Again, with election coming up, I'll just let you sort of soak up the chart for a minute, take all the levels that you want. And again, watch out for the midweek update if it's voted in. So if you've made it to this point in the video, I'm sure you're enjoying the analysis. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel so you know every single time a new video comes out. So jumping into our companies, again, we're going to stick to the facts for now. Just look at what price action is actually doing and not try to make too many predictions. When it comes to traders this week, there's going to be two types of people. There's going to be someone who wins really big and they're going to tell you, I told you so, I knew this was going to happen. Uh, and they're going to have, you know, they're going to, it's, it's going to look like they knew what they were talking about. They're going to make a lot of money. On the flip side of that coin, there's going to be someone who thought they knew what was going to happen and that didn't happen and their account is now blown. So please don't be either of those traders. I'm just telling you right now up front, I'm not going to be looking to be trading at all really in the first few days here. Maybe some really quick intraday scalps, not holding anything longer than probably 30 minutes because with, with a news cycle that's happening so rapidly, any headline could really alter price. So again, 
be careful out there coming up into the week. Um, and let's just go over some some levels and facts. So on Apple, uh, what's interesting here is that we got rejected at the 50 SMA twice on each attempt to break our resistance trend line. So that's bearish. We're now trading back below our, our resistance trend line and we have a red uh, continuation candle. It looks like we wanna go lower. If we break down through 106, then of course we're into our pre uh, or our last earnings cycle gap up candle, in which case, again, we expect some sort of chop there. But if that doesn't happen, look for a gap fill down to 96.31. Anything lower is at 88.28. To the upside, let's just cover it quick. If we can clear that 50 SMA, which again, we would expect to act as resistance, we're really looking at 125 swing high, 128 as a little hiccup, and then the all-time high at 137. So on Netflix, I'm actually pretty bearish on it, regardless of election or not. Reason being is we set an all-time high. We then had a really strong move that looked like a huge bear uh, bull flag, excuse me. And then we started to break out of it, but we failed to even come up and retest that all-time high. Then on the pre-earnings run-up, we came up, retested it, and then it really crumbled. And we, again, saw a huge gap down with earnings. Things went lower. So I'm pretty bearish here on the fact that we couldn't make a new all-time high on three attempts. Also on this large push up there on Thursday, again, this is something that we might cover on the midweek update when you know news like this comes out. Um, that really materialized to nothing. We've retraced more than 100% of that move, and now we've broken down below our 481 lows here. It looks like we're going to come into our next key support at 467.07, which at this point, I would just consider that a flush point. If that breaks, then it's all downhill for Netflix from there. So that's why I'm bearish here on Netflix in the longer term, uh, in, the, in the picture of uh, price action and what's going on. But again, with earnings, just take a minute, soak up the chart. If something crazy happens, you do have the upside levels mapped out. So on Tesla, we were continuously talking about the back test of the support trend line in the Discord server all week, and then it crumbled down there on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So that resistance trend line or support was prior support. Now resistance uh, is certainly in play. It looks like we got rejected at a super resistance, right? Our horizontal level at 429 as well. So let's go ahead and get that off the chart. Uh, unclutter some things. And again, just focusing on the facts here, it does look like with a red candle like this, we want to continue lower into some of our support zone here. We've given up that 50 SMA, which is a bearish thing. And we now have a new resistance trend line in play, very similar to what's going on in Apple, for example. So if we do something like this and draw in and connect our highs, that's the resistance trend line you want to be watching out for. Look for any retests of it and then potentially going lower on the rejection. So Alibaba actually has not even reported earnings yet, and they've really just been chopping around in a sideways range, really breaking everyone's heart. Again, they tried to break out of this large pressure cooker top that we've been building for so long. We even cleared the 313.78 level that was, you know, a new all-time high, and then it really materialized to nothing. We came back down into the range, and we even traded lower and filled this gap right here on Friday. Of course, we did print a lower wick there, a little bit larger than what we've seen in SPY and in Tesla, for example. So this looks more like a hammer to me where buyers really stepped up on the gap fill. But again, with earnings coming up, with the election coming up, anything can sort of happen here, uh, especially in regard to foreign policy, them being a Chinese company. So really watch out for this one. I wouldn't try to hold anything through the election or earnings, but you do have the levels to the upside and downside. And again, just focusing on the facts here, the lower wick would imply to me that buyers are starting to step up. They do want to prop prices up and keep them in this upper range here. And again, with a stronger breakout, I think things could really get going for Alibaba, uh, but be prepared for anything. Facebook is another interesting one, and the reason I say that is because while the market was breaking down on Monday and Tuesday, it was actually holding value higher. And then on Wednesday, we saw that crazy snap to the downside. Tuesday, we actually, you know, not a true gap, but a, a gap higher in terms of where the close and the open was. And then we went higher, right, to retest our pressure cooker top. And then Friday, boom, right back down again. So interesting one here, uh, especially with the earnings and how that affected our Friday price action. Regardless, we're sitting at a new key flush point, right? Our 259.16, and with a large-bodied red candle like this, I'm sure you've heard, or you're sick of me saying it right now, this is a continuation lower uh, candle, right? Very small lower wick in relationship to the entire size of the body. Looks more like just short covering into the end of the day than any sort of serious buying. So if this breaks, we're going lower, probably to this cluster of lows here at four, or excuse me, 247.16. Anything after that, and you'll remember that we have a pretty large gap underneath us to be filled. Of course, the gap doesn't start until that low right there, but it fills all the way down to 234.69. To the upside, again, just keeping in mind anything can happen here, I would really just focus on this swing high up here around 283.55. Anything after that, and we have 291 and then 304.67 all-time high. 
NVIDIA is another one of our companies that has not yet reported, but it is or starting to do some really key structural things, right? We have broken down through our 50 SMA and our support trend line, which has remained intact for quite some time. That being said, again, it looks like we have a red continuation lower candle here. Uh, the wick is slightly larger, but again, I'm not sure if that's just some short covering into the end of the day. We're not going to try to guess. What we need to focus on is how it acts if we come back up and retest our new resistance trend line. Do we get rejected and continue lower? If we break down through Friday's low, again, I would expect lower, in which case we have support there at 481.71, and then a little ways to run down to 454 and then 432. If we do break the resistance trend line, then of course we have a back test of our support trend line in store where we could come into super resistance at 531, uh, even up here at 546 and 564, depending on when this back test comes. So all is gonna hinge upon this resistance trend line. Can it break? Can we get back above that 50 SMA? Again, just kind of sitting on hands here until all of our major events are over. So here on Microsoft, we actually have more of something we can definitively call a hammer candle with a larger lower wick than the entire body of the candle there on Friday. That being said, we're at a support. We've closed above that support. Can we see a bounce into our resistance trend line? It's a pretty steep one, so I would expect first touch uh, negation. And then if we can hold that Friday low, maybe a move higher. Again, that's sort of a prediction. I told you I wasn't going to do too many of those, but you know that's a potential scenario here in Microsoft uh, should there be no sort of craziness with the election, which is very low probability. To the upside, if we can clear it though, let's just go over the targets. We have 216.31, 224, and then all-time high at 231. To the downside, let's say the hammer fails, we don't get any sort of bounce, don't come into the resistance trend line at all. We're looking at a move into these lows here, double bottom, tweezer bottom there at 196. If we go lower, then we're looking at immediately just below, key cluster of lows at 193, 200 SMA in between, but really the 186 and then the 180 whole dollar below. Amazon, as I'm sure you're, again, sick of me saying by now, red continuation candle there in terms of looking at the facts. It does look like we want to come into our support here at 29.23 if it breaks, prior breakout level underneath at 27.81, another prior breakout level and key, uh, you know, confirmed as support by that tiny little red hammer right there at 26.30. And then under, uh, that's actually a super support now that I just look over here with the 200 SMA. But if we go lower, we're looking at 224.44.92, which is again, another key support from history. If we get a bounce out of our support, of course, we'll have to battle back through this key resistance area, which is at 31.31 to 31.60. That will be key. Above that is the 50 SMA. And above that is a cluster of highs, right? That was prior breakout level from in here, confirmed as support once we broke above. And now it has acted as resistance a few times in the most recent past. So 32.45 will be a key level. After that, this one doesn't look too important to me at 33.43. It was a it was an all-time high at one point, but then we blasted right through it, blasted right down through it. Uh, of course, there was one touch here. Did act as a little bit there, but again, doesn't look too key. The, the, the one I would focus on is here at 34.50. And then, of course, the all-time high after that. Starting off with Lulu for our quick fire round. Again, we're going through the facts here quite quickly. Red continuation candle looks like we want to come into our support here at 310.25. Underneath that, we have a critical support at 287 and the 200 SMA is going to start to catch up with that slowly but surely uh, providing a super support around that level. Anything underneath and it looks like we have quite a ways to go all the way down to 247.62 which comes from a previous breakout level right here to the upside 50 SMA has acted as strong resistance in the past a little rejection right there. If we can clear it I'd really just focus on this swing high up here at 358. After that this area of support at 373 and of course the all-time high at $400. So BYND, my goodness, what an absolute massacre here. We are coming into what looks like a key support, right? If we do something like this and map out this prior high, resistance, resistance, and then it was support, support. Let's see if we can get some sort of dead cat bounce here again with the election coming up though and earnings on this one. I wouldn't be holding my breath here. I'd probably just stay away until both events are over. To the upside, it looks like we have resistance here. 50 SMA is gonna sort of be a super resistance at that level, anything higher. This is our next level of resistance at 172.19. Uh, 
and then we'll map out a few at the all-time high there and a perfect double top there at 197.43. To the downside, if we do get continuation lower, this is quite a key and obvious area of support. Just look at all these touches here forming a perfect shelf. If we do come down into it, that 200 SMA should provide a little support before, and then really it's a flush point, in which case I would expect it to break with all the stop losses that are probably below here. It's really just looking for drilling lower at that point. So DraftKings, again, completely fell apart as the market started to crumble. It did not hold on to its super support here, and we went lower right to our target at $35 just about. To the downside, if we get continuation lower, then we are looking at this as next support, 3187, and we'll walk down one more. Um, I would just go to this swing low, really, at 2750. So watch out for that to the downside. If we do get the dead cat bounce again with the election and earnings coming up, I'd probably just be waiting, uh, but we're looking at Resistance here at 4066, we talked about that being a key level and the potential for chop really in this zone, right? That might still be in store. Uh, but again, upside targets after that, 43, 50 SMA in between, and then the 4916 after that. SQ does have earnings coming up. Again, a huge red continuation candle right here. And what I want you to note more specifically is on really big volume. So that was a key break there of the 50 SMA and this prior breakout level, which was support or should have been anyways at 158.50. Now that we're below it, it does look like we want to come into our next support below 148.37. Anything underneath is going to be this set of lows at 137.33. Again, that looks likely with a red continuation candle, large volume. To the upside though, if we get some sort of relief bounce, we'll first have to fight back up through this key area at 158.54. If we can, 50 SMA will be in store. It has acted as support when we've sort of wrote it in the past. So I'd be interested to see how it acts as resistance when we're coming at it from the bo uh, bottom up. After that, it's the previous all-time high and breakout here at 170.61. And we'll map out the all-time high cluster resistance up there at 192. PayPal, same exact thing as Square. They're pretty much in the same space and they move very similarly. We do have earnings coming up, pretty big red volume, not as big as Square's uh, comparatively to what we saw in the past, right? Some of these spikes are pretty large as well. Um, but we do, again, have a large red continuation candle. We did break key support and it does look like we want to come into our next level there at 180, the whole dollar. Anything underneath, we have 171.80. To the upside, again, if we get a relief bounce for some reason, we do have to battle back up through that 50 SMA and again, a little bit of a super resistance up here at 196.50. After that, we have $203.89 as prior resistance and a small little fake break level right here, right? We fake break to the upside, huge smash back down. Uh, and here, fake break, came back down, tried to fake break one more time and get acceptance. And it's really just been downhill from there. So that would be a key uh, area for me, that 203.89. If we can break above and hold, it then starts to tell a little bit of a different story, in which case we can start looking at the all-time high as a target and blue sky territories. We have yet to draw anything here on Intel, so let's go ahead and do that. It looks like we had key support right here, which is broken. And again, I mapped this level out because that's right where our high was from this huge gap down. So that's actually the uh, top of a gap, and the bottom of that gap is somewhere in here. Around $53 were rounded up because that low of that day is actually higher than what we mapped out. So keep that in mind, a huge gap above right here. Um, but right now, based on the price action, it doesn't look like we even want to come back up and test it. What we're doing is forming a bear flag, and we're starting to actually consolidate and go sideways. I know these candles are pretty small right here, but some sideways action down here doesn't really bode well for an actual reversal. It means prices are getting accepted in this range and will likely see a continuation lower. So that being said, uh, we do have key support. In here, very interesting, you know, technical analysis does work. Look at this low and look at this exact low right there. So very interesting right there. Anything underneath, we got to scrunch up the chart and look. And it looks like we have this cluster of lows here, which are very, very close at 43.20 uh, as opposed to 43.69. Um, let's look for another more extreme uh, low. This is a little bit lower and it does look like it has a few data points at 42.28. Uh, um, and then really, it's it's quite quite interesting actually that we have to go so far back. We'll map this level out. I like that. So 36.73 on any you know longer term break of any of these key supports in here that looks likely to me.
So Boeing also doesn't have too, too many drawings on it. We did get rejected at our resistance trend line. This one's another heartbreaker. It looks like it wants to break out so many times, right? Comes to retest this now pressure cooker top of a resistance trend line, right? Even get a gap up over it on this day. But from then we just sold off and now we're actually much lower. So heartbreaker of a stock to trade right here with Boeing. Let's go ahead and look at a support level here. Uh, reason I tried to pick that one out is because if you follow the cursor all the way to the left, it also coincides with some of these highs back here. So interesting that we're already starting to break it. Let's go ahead and map out some lower ones. I sort of like this area of the chart right at 120.88. Could potentially be a zone to play down to 113.84, watching for reversal candles around that general area. And after that, it's really, uh, you know, kind of sad, but all the way down here to 90.54 on Boeing. To the upside, let's map out a key resistance, which was prior support. So this area right here, once it broke, that's where the, you know, more intense selling started, right? We got multiple gap downs in a row and we went all the way to our prior low here. So 161.50, if we can clear it uh, back to the upside, of course, we do have the resistance trend line, 50 SMA, lots of overhead resistance right here, what I'm starting to call power lines in the Discord server. Uh, above that, it looks like we could swing into some of these highs, but more importantly, this triple top right here catches my eye first and that's at 180.50. ABV, I have yet to mark this one up as well. So let's go ahead and map out some key levels. That looks like a nice resistance to me. This area looks like a key support and we do have a gap below us actually and that gap fills down to 81.36. Of course, the low of this candle, which actually might coincide with, if I could get this zoom right, uh, some of these lows, let's see, uh, almost. So almost a, you know, you know, support move down to the to the to the penny there at 79.27, not quite. Uh, but if we go lower, let's map out a key support underneath. Quite a lot of chop actually in here. Uh, I would call that triple bottom just about at 71.50. Anything after that is going to be the low of the uh, essentially the COVID move, if you will. Shh, don't say that word. Uh, so we'll go down there to 64.66. Anything to the upside if we see continuation, which again, based on the facts here. That large green candle does bode well for continuation, especially after a gap up and hold, given the market con uh, you know, conditions, it looks like this resistance might be in play. It's going to act as a triple super resistance. Why do I say that? Hopefully you know by now. 50 SMA, 200 SMA, as well as horizontal resistance all at the same spot should act as one, a magnet to pull prices up, but then two, act as an area for chop, maybe even a little bit of downside action pullback, and then maybe higher. Let's map out a target after that. We'll look at this set of highs right in here. Oops, there we go. Let's click it. $92 after that. Next set of highs is right up here. We'll call it at $95.87. So Fastly, very, very interesting here because we have extreme acceleration to the upside off of our support trend line. Let's actually just extend that to the left or right rather. If you notice, look at how far away from the already very steep support trend line we get. And then boom, we don't even we don't even hesitate to just completely flush through it here. There was very little sympathy. There was one day of bounce really. And now it's just been much lower after that. So looking pretty weak here, coming into the 200 SMA is something I would expect at 5567. Let's see if it coincides with any lower supports. Let's first map out this one. That was a key one that was uh, flushed through. Anything underneath prior resistance should turn into support. That's at 49.85 and one more underneath that. Uh, let's yeah, let's call that one as well at 43.17. To the upside again, first having to battle back up through a very very key and historic level at 76.05 before we can even consider coming back into this level at 86, 50 SMA or even attempting a huge gap fill, which is way up there. That's you know certainly doesn't look like it's in the cards at all. Let's focus on the facts. Red continuation candle to the downside down does look likely. And Peloton, almost the same thing, right? We have a support trend line that was pretty steep looking like that, broke it through price, consolidated sideways, meaning prices did accept lower on the break there, and now we're continuing lower. So if we get a break of this key level, right, 109, 110, let's just call it the whole number there. We're coming back down into a prior breakout zone around $100 to 98.50. 50 SMA is at this level. I would expect a bounce regardless. Do know earnings are coming up uh, in early um, November. Anything underneath, and we're looking at 88.33. And after that, let's map out one more. I like this area here at 78.93. So that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Weekly Watch List. Again, don't forget to vote on whether or not you would like to see the midweek market updates. Uh, just leave a comment down below. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I hope that you stay safe through the election cycle. Any more earnings that come up. And again, stay green. It's trading week.